Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and travelled up to Judea, to the house of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of heavenly hosts, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy his favor. The Gospel of the Lord. A few days ago, as part of our preparations for Christmas, I gathered with the boys and girls of St. John Bosco and St. Anne's Primaries to have a blessing of the images of the baby Jesus that they will use in their cribs at home. It was lovely to see. And thinking about the crib and the statues of the baby Jesus reminded me of an experience I had some years ago now. Some very close friends of mine came to visit me in my last parish over the Christmas period. They have a daughter called Sophie, who at that time was very young. She asked me if she could go into the church and see the crib and see the baby Jesus. I gladly took her in. And she asked, could she hold the baby Jesus for a while? Of course, I said. And she held it with great joy. And it has to be said, love. That was fine. Then her mum and dad came in to see what Sophie was up to, and we get into an adult's conversation, taking our attention off Sophie. In the meantime, Sophie decided that it was time to give Jesus back to Mary and Joseph and have a chat with them. When we turned around to see what she was up to, we discovered this. When you look at that scene, you cannot help but think Sophie is the centre of that crib. She even has the baby Jesus turned round looking at her. Today, I want to put the spotlight on the baby Jesus. When you look at the crib scene, you cannot help but to be drawn to the image of the baby Jesus. I wonder why that is. I think one reason is that we are just attracted to babies in general. They're just adorable and cute. They don't talk back. They don't ask to borrow the car. They're just so sweet. I remember the warm feeling I had when I held my nieces and my nephews and my friends' babies when they were just a few weeks old. As you hold them, you experience that they have no judgments, no angles, no demands. They are just being totally themselves. It's a strange thing. But us normally reserved adults all seem to resort to baby talk when we hold a baby. One of the advantages that I have of not being a dad is that I can enjoy the good feeling 
and then hand the baby back to mum and dad when I'm done. No 2 a.m. feeds for me. But you know, I can't help but think that we treat the baby Jesus in the same way. It's like this wonderful, cute, adorable baby that makes no demands in us. He's not crying or filling his nappy. He's just being a baby we come to see each Christmas. And we spend a little quality time. And then at the end of the Christmas season, we give him back to his mum and dad. And next Christmas, when it comes around, well, there he is again. And yet, this little baby Jesus really has very little bearing on our day-to-day -day lives. I would suggest that if we are focused on the cute factor, we might be missing out on something else. You see, the original Christmas story, and I hate to rain on your parade, but it wasn't a cute affair. The background was that you are people who were crushed and oppressed generation after generation. And at the time of the nativity, they were being occupied by the Romans. They are being taxed heavily. In the midst of this, you have a young girl who is pregnant outside wedlock, which at that time would have been especially shameful. The Romans had come up with a great idea for a census to make sure that they were taxing everybody that they could. So Joseph and Mary have to travel from the north to Bethlehem in the south, a distance of about 93 miles, and they had to do it on foot with Mary heavily pregnant. When they arrive, there is no room in the inn, which is really saying, you don't belong here. So they are relegated to the stable with all the animals and smells and the itchy straw. This is the non-sterile environment that Mary has to give birth to her child. After the baby is born, King Herod finds out and goes berserk and he massacres all those innocents in the region. This story is not cute, but it is good news. To illustrate this, I want to draw your attention to the words of the angels who, procla who proclaim to the shepherd the message of the good news. They say, listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. They proclaim the good news, not for some people, a select few, but for everybody. They, they go on to say that it's to you that the child is born. It's not that the angels are saying that you've got to go and visit this wee baby and you can give him back to his mum and dad when you're finished. No, it's not someone else's baby. He has been born to you. This child is born for you. He has come as the fulfillment of all that you've hoped for and longed for. He is a saviour who is Christ the Lord. He is God and he had come to save you. You see, if Jesus did come as a baby, but if we think of him only as staying a baby, then that doesn't even begin to touch the reason why he came. Jesus came to save us. Ultimately, he came to go to the cross. At the cross, Jesus took with him every bad thing that you can imagine. He took it all to the cross so that those things die with him, so that none of them will have an eternal impact on any of us. Jesus came to save us. He was able to do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. The Christmas revelation is that normally children depend on us but we radically depend on the child Jesus. We need him desperately to save us. 
and He wants to save us. That's the good news. God sends His Son into the world out of love to save me and to save you personally. We don't have to win salvation for ourselves. Jesus does that for us. And this good news invites a response. We hear in Luke's gospel that the, that the shepherds, they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. They didn't only just go, they hurried. Their response was urgent. So how do we respond this Christmas? There are some of us joining here who will be quite content every year to reflect on the baby Jesus. And you look forward to next year when hopefully we'll be able to do this without the restrictions of COVID. But day to day, there will be very little bearing that he has on your life directly. And that's okay. There's no judgment there. But I would suggest that if this is you, there might be something more that you are missing out on, something awesome. Perhaps you're here and are willing to explore more deeply. If that is you, there is a bit of openness to saying, who is this Jesus? If that's you, I would invite you to consider something we call Alpha. We run it periodically in our parishes, and now we run it online, which makes it even more accessible to you. The format is, we welcome you. No matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey or your faith journey, even if you've not even started that faith journey, we have a relevant talk. Then we just have a, a general conversation about what was seen and heard. It's low key, it's fun, and there's no pressure whatsoever. People often find it a wonderful space in which to experience some of the deepest meanings of life. And our next session begins on the 20th of January. It's easy to join us. Just go to our website, catholicerskine.website, and register your interest. Perhaps there are some of you today who find yourself more open to letting Jesus be the Savior. I heard a story about a priest who turned up at a church meeting that was discussing how to make church more attractive to young people. And they were going around the room, and the mostly middle-aged people were saying things like, they need a pizza night, or trips to the bowling alley, and all those kind of things. All these great ideas, and they were fun. But the priest was last to speak. And he said, do you know what? I think these are all really good ideas. But I think what young people need is really the same thing that old people need, which is the same thing that everybody needs. And that's a personal relationship with Jesus. Well, you can imagine this did not go down so well with the group. They kind of felt sorry for the old guy. But I wonder if we complicate things too much. There is within us a yearning, a need for something. We might not be able to put it into words as to what it is. But what if the thing that we are longing for is Jesus? I want to end today by praying for you, especially if you're thinking in your heart right now, do you know what? I want to know this Jesus. I want him to be the savior of my life. I invite you now just to close your eyes and allow this prayer to wash over you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to us this Christmas. We thank you for your love for us. That the Father would send you to us and that you would say yes. Thank you for coming. Lord, I acknowledge all the times that I have tried to be my own savior. When I have tried to do 
life by myself and found it just tires me out and I end up being frazzled and stretched. Lord Jesus, this Christmas, I want to resign from being the Savior. I invite you to be my personal Savior. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing here. Thank you for what you will continue to do in our hearts. We trust you and we love you. Amen.